Welcome to the second video of my CSGO skin making tutorial using free and open source tools. In the first video we talked about the tools that we need for skin making and created the textures of the Glock Extravagant skin. Now we will be creating the carvings on the skin. As we can see in the picture there are three carvings on both sides of the skin, each also colored with gold. We'll also add some bumps on the back of the Glock. Carvings and bumps are achieved by drawing on a height map, which is then baked onto a normal map. The normal map baking will be done in the next video. Today we'll just prepare the height map. Drawing height is done using colors between white and black. Light colors mean that the drawings are extruding, and dark colors mean that the drawings are basically carvings. So for the shapes on the sides of the Glock we'll use dark colors, and for the bumps on the back we'll use light colors. Okay, so let's start. All the carvings and bumps will be applied onto the wooden texture. So go to the shading tab and make sure that the wood material is chosen. Also make sure that you are in the material preview mode, otherwise the changes we'll do might not be visible instantly. Now we need to add a few more nodes to our current configuration. First we need another principal shader node. Simply choose the existing one, and press shift D to duplicate it and put it down below. The new shader will contain today's additions. In order to combine this information with the existing texture configuration, create a mix shader node by clicking shift A, shader, mix shader. Connect the top principal shader to the first shader of the mix node and the bottom shader to the second shader and connect the mix shader node to the surface of the material output. Don't worry about the change in the texture, we'll fix that in a moment. Let's go to the texture paint tab. This is where we'll draw our bumps and carvings. The reason that you see the pink color is because currently there is no image to draw on. So let's create one by creating a new texture paint slot in the active tools tab at the right. Click on the plus sign and choose base color. Set the width and the height to 2048. You can do so in a quick gesture by left clicking on the width field and dragging the mouse to the height field and releasing the click. Now you can multiply the value 1024 by 2 and, it'll, and it will evaluate it as 2048. Next click on the color field and set the A value, which stands for alpha, Set that to 0, and click OK. If the lower part suddenly disappears, then you're in the solid mode. Change the mode to Material Preview. The image we've just created will be used to color the carvings. In our case, the color will be gold. We need to create another slot. Click on the plus sign again, and this time choose Bump. If the width and height are set to 2048, then you can go ahead and click OK. This image will act as our height map and will contain the white to black values that will represent the bumps and carvings. Let's go back to the shader tab. We can see now that three new nodes have been added, one for each image we created in the texture paint tab, as well as a bump node. Let's move them to the back a little bit. Now connect the wood base color node to the base color of the bottom principal shader and connect it to the fac of the mix shader. And now we got our wooden texture back. The wood bump node is already connected to the height of the bump node, which is connected to the normal of the top principal shader. We also need to connect it to the bottom shader as well, so let's do that. One final change that we need to do is to raise the metallic value of the bottom shader to the maximum and set the roughness to somewhere around 0.35, since we need the color of the carvings to be golden. And with this, we're done with the shader tab. Now let's start adding the carvings, and we'll start with the one on the handle. Go back to the texture paint tab. Make sure that we are facing the left side of the model by clicking the X at the top right side. In the texture slots section at the right, make sure that the wood bump is selected. Scroll a little bit to the color section, and let's choose a dark color, something close to black. Now if we draw on the model, we'll see it getting carved. By the way, in order to set the size of the brush, press F and move the, move the mouse left and right until you get the size you want. 
However, I won't be actually drawing. Instead, I'll use something called stencil and I'll apply the alpha of a picture that I created using Inkscape. Scroll a little bit more and expand the texture field. In the drop down list of the mapping field, choose stencil and then click new. Rename it to something like handle stencil. Now let's go to the texture properties tab at the bottom. We can see that the texture is already set to the one we've just created. Now we need to choose the picture which we'll need to apply. As for me, I will be using the pictures that I already created when I created the skin. For the sake of keeping up with this tutorial, if you don't have the alpha of a picture, then I suggest that you create an image with a simple shape such as a circle or a square. As you can see, the image should have no background and the shape should be colored white. For my designs, I colored the shape using a gradient with white in the center and gray at the edges so that the carvings would look smooth and not square edged. So when you have your design ready, go back to Blender and in the texture properties tab under the image section, click on open and choose the image you created. We can see in the preview that the image is, is repeating itself and we don't want that. So to change it, expand the mapping field and in the drop down list of the extension field, choose extend. As you can see, the stencil now appears in front of us. However, we need to tilt it, change its size and move it. You can move the stencil by clicking the right mouse button. To control the size, click shift right mouse button and move the mouse around. And to change the angle, click control right mouse button and move the mouse. This looks good. Increase the size of the brush in order to make sure that we don't miss any spots. Now we want the same stencil to be applied to both sides of the handle. In order to do that we need to go back to the Active Tools tab and scroll all the way down to Options. And uncheck the Occlude and Backface Culling options. Now let's start drawing. Click on the left mouse button and move the mouse around the stencil. Now as an important general rule, after you draw with a stencil, I strongly recommend not to move the stencil or the model in any way until you are 100% done drawing. The reason for that is because later we will color the carving, and we want the color to exactly match the carving. In order to see the results of our drawing better, we can go to the layout tab and view it there. Let's go back to the texture paint tab. By the way, on the left side we can see the UV sheet of the weapon. And now after we drew the shape we can see where it was applied on the UV sheet. So this is what our height map currently looks like. However, we need to save the image separately. It's not enough to save the Blender file in order to save the image. We do that by going to image on the top left and clicking save. Or by pressing Alt S. I'm going to create a new folder called UV and we'll put all the UV sheet images there. Now let's paint the carving. We will paint on the base color image we created earlier. So let's go to the texture slots and choose wood base color. We want the color to be similar to the golden part of the Glock. So we can choose the color picker to pick our color. I'm going to click on the circle button here in order to keep the gray color unchanged and we'll replace the white color instead. Okay, this looks a bit too dark, so let's make it lighter. Now without moving the stencil or the Glock, we paint as we did earlier. And now the shape looks golden as we wanted. Let's save the image by pressing Alt S. Let's move to the top carvings. Again, I'll be using the design I already created. Feel free to use any shape that you have. In the active tools, let's scroll down to texture and create a new one by clicking this button. I will name it Top Carving. Let's go to the Texture Properties tab and choose our image. And set the extension to Extend. We can see that the shape is tilted and does not have the proportions that we want. In order to fix that, we need to go back to the Active Tools tab and scroll down to Texture again. We can see here that there are transformation properties that we can play with. Click Reset Transform to set the angle back to zero. 
Now we need to modify the size of the shape. Blender provides the option of controlling the proportions across each axis separately. In our case, we need to increase the size across the Y axis. 6 looks good. Play around with the overall size until the shape fits. Now that our stencil is ready, we can paint as we did on the handle. So now we painted on the base color first. And this is how it looks without the height map. Let's paint the same shape on the height map. Go to the texture slots and choose wood bump. Scroll down to colors and click on the circle to switch colors. And without moving anything, start painting the stencil. Now we do the same on the right side. Let's decrease the size of the stencil a little bit. And now we draw. Let's also paint the color. This looks good, but I don't want the small part here to be part of the carving. So let's erase that by going to the brush settings and setting the blend to erase alpha. Let's remove the stencil and erase the unwanted part of the UV sheet as it will be easier. It's this part right here. Let's save and go to the bump image. Let's change the blend to mix again. Open the color picker to pick the gray color of the height map from the list above. Now paint over the unwanted area and save the file. And with this, we're done with the carvings. Last thing we'll do in this video is to add the bumps at the back of the Glock. For this, we won't need any stencils and we'll work only with the wood bump image. In the Active Tools tab, scroll down to Colors and set the color to white, since we want the bumps to be extruding. Then scroll down to the Stroke field and expand it. Set the Stroke method to Line, and the spacing to somewhere around 180, and set the radius of the brush to around 4 pixels. Press on the Y at the top right of the panel in order to see the back of the Glock. You can go ahead and hide the magazine for now. And one last thing we need to do before we begin drawing is to check the occlude and back face culling because we only want the area directly under the brush to be affected. Now we can draw straight lines and we can control the angle of the line better by pressing Alt. Drag the line to the bottom and release. That looks good. Let's make a few more lines. Now save the wood bump image again and go back to the layout view and change the view to render mode. And this concludes the second video in the tutorial. Thank you for listening. Stay tuned for the next video where we will bake our diffuse and normal maps.